Shalom. This is your host, Pastor Enoch Piri. Welcome to Taking Dominion. And uh, today, ladies and gentlemen, I will continue talking to you over the subject, which is entitled as um, Kingdom Principles of uh, Prayer. I'm going to just give you a little bit of a background so that we understand where we are coming from. You know, last time when I was uh, uh, talking to you, I mentioned to you, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, uh, the disciples of Jesus were all uh, Jewish, were, were Hebrew men. I'm talking about the first 12 disciples. Of course, uh, at a later stage, there were women who joined the, 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 the discipleship program. But specifically, the first disciples were 12. And, and among the disciples of Jesus, some of them came to him and said to him, Master, teach us how to pray just like uh, John taught his disciples. And uh, for many, many years, this baffled me because uh, Jewish people, Hebrew people, they are taught how to pray at a very tender age, at a very young age. And, and of course, for, for, for Peter, John, Zebedee, and other disciples, for them to follow Jesus, it means they had a, a background of, uh, of, uh, of uh, the word of God or the Bible or the Torah. They had a background, and for them to follow uh, Jesus Christ, I would say that they were religiously inclined to Judaism, which is, of course, based upon the five commandments and uh, the prophets. And, 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 and today, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to explain to you the reason why uh, the disciples uh, asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. And uh, one of the reasons, of course, is because uh, Jesus Christ prayed differently. The prayers of Jesus were not religious. And uh, the prayers of Jesus were, were, were kingdom-based. Because it is important for, for, for the body of Christ to, to learn how to pray according to the kingdom. You know, because remember, the Bible says that Jesus Christ chose us. Like I said it uh, uh, to his disciples that uh, you did not choose me. It's me who chose you. And I want to even go further, ladies and gentlemen, and explain to you that the difference between the kingdom and the Republican is that uh, in a Republican, it is the, 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 the subject who choose their leader. And uh, in a kingdom, it is uh, the leader who choose the subject. So in this case, we are chosen by Jesus Christ. I'm not here on my own. I'm here because I'm chosen by God. Hence, when it comes to the matters of salvation and, uh, and when it comes to the message of the salvation of, of Jesus Christ, I'm very much confident Ladies and gentlemen, that I'm not here where I am by myself or for myself for that matter, but I'm here because God has chosen me. And that what makes the concept of the kingdom very, very interesting because uh, I don't belong to myself, I belong to God. I am God's product. I'm God's agenda. I am God's project. And it is God who has to see to it that this project called uh, Enoch Perry is accomplished. The Bible says that he who has started a good work in me is going to accomplish it. We are learning about prayer. We ended uh, in verse 10. Just to give you a recap, uh, the Bible says um, in uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, that uh, your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. And, 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 and obviously, in verse 9, we, we, we learned last week that uh, Jesus said, uh, our Father who art in heaven, because Jesus was acknowledging that our Father, our God, lives in heaven. He has jurisdiction in heaven, and also he has given jurisdiction for human beings or for men to operate on earth. This does not mean that uh, he is not the God of heaven and earth. He is the God of heaven and earth. He is the God of the universe. But in this regard, God has given dominion to mankind to operate upon the face of the earth. Hence, he doesn't say our Father who is in heaven and on earth because uh, Jesus is teaching his disciples that they must be attentive over every word which he utters. They need to learn something. Over every statement that he speaks, they need to learn something. And this time around, Jesus is deliberately not saying our Father 
who is the God of the universe, or our Father, who is the God of heavens and the earth, but specifically saying and teaching the disciples that our Father who is in heaven, because he is propelling an idea to the disciple that is also the God operating in the disciples, operating in men by occupying the earth. So is God is both the God of the heavens and uh, the God of the earth. And, and furthermore, uh, uh, the, Bible, the Bible says, Jesus says, uh, give us today our daily bread. Give us today our daily bread. You know, reading from an English uh, uh, version, uh, verse 11, you will agree with me if you have been taught English like me. Yeah. Uh, many of us have been taught English as a second language and, the, and we, we, we were told to, to, to refrain from using repetitions. You mustn't repeat uh, two words in one sentence. In this regard, uh, the words daily and today, these are words which are repeated in this phrase, in this phrase rather, today and daily. You, you shouldn't say give us today. And uh, you shouldn't say in the same line that our daily bread. This is what we were taught. Because this uh, caught my attention for the first time uh, after so many years when I was doing my Bible study. Why does the Bible say, give us today our daily bread? It's simple. What Jesus is teaching his disciples is, you must pray for something today which will sustain you daily. This is what uh, verse 11 simply means. Just saying to the disciples, this is how you must pray. Pray for an idea today which must sustain your life daily. So it's not for God to give us bread just today. Then what happens tomorrow? What happens the other day uh, or next week? What happens next month? Because the God we serve is a very strategic God. When God empowers you, he doesn't need you to keep on coming every day for the same thing that you prayed over last week because he hears you the first time you pray. When you seek the face of the Lord, he hears you. So now, my brother and sister, I want to give you a challenge and give you a question in a form of a challenge. What answered prayer do you need from the Lord? If a chance can be given that God answer you that prayer, then you won't ask him the same thing over and over again. What is it that you are looking for? And this is what Jesus is teaching us at this moment, that we need to ask God to give us uh, something which is going to sustain us daily. This is the principle of the kingdom. If I have to live my life effectively for the next 10 years, before I even pray to God, my question is to myself and to everyone else is that uh, what is it that I need which can sustain me for the rest of my life or for the, for the next 10 years or for the next 15 years? The moment you answer that and you seek the face of the Lord, the Lord will never let you down. He won't let you down because the Bible says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. One thing I love about the Bible, the Bible explains itself. The Bible agrees upon itself. You know, some people that would say that the Bible contradicts itself. God does not contradict himself. And the moment we understand the intention of Jesus, the moment we understand the intention of God, the moment we understand why God wants us to live in a victory and live victorious lives, the moment we understand that, then we'll be able to use the tools which are provided to us in the word of God. For example, the scripture that we've just read, give us today our daily bread. Give us today our daily bread. We simply mean, once more I repeat, ladies and gentlemen, give me something, Lord. And when I have that thing, it is going to sustain me the rest of my life. The kingdom principle of prayer, ladies and gentlemen, is to get to a point where we know that God is in control. Remember, as a subject of the kingdom, as a member of the kingdom, you are an insider 
You are not an outsider. And when you talk to your father, when you talk to God, you speak to God as an insider, somebody who's been given information of who God is and what God can do. God has given us information. You, you know, there was one scripture in the Bible, in the book of Deuteronomy, which blesses me so much, where, 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 where the Bible says uh, that I, I, I present to you today, choose between a blessing and a curse. And, and furthermore, it says, uh, choose a blessing. You know, you know, God is giving us a multiple choice, but also at the same time, he's giving us an answer. He's leading us to choose what he really wants us to know. The Bible is not a multiple choice book. The Bible is not a trial and error book. The Bible is the mind of God. The Bible reveals the state of man. The Bible also reveals the way of salvation. The Bible also reveals the redemption of a sinner. The Bible. Everything is in the Bible. If you want to know God, understand what the Bible says. That uh, do not let this book of the Lord depart from your mouth. Rather, meditate upon it days and nights. The more you meditate upon the word of God, the more you meditate upon the word of God, the more you meditate upon the word of God, is the more you're going to know God. And God does not want you to struggle. He doesn't want you to suffer. It is not God's will for you to suffer. Yes, at times, God will expose you to certain situations for you to learn something. But the ultimate goal is to equip you to be a better person. The ultimate goal is to equip you to be a better Christian, to be a better believer, to be more effective than ever before so that you can come out of that situation with a testimony. You know, we talk about a message. You can never be entrusted with a message if you've never gone through a mess. So a mess is important in your life, but not for a lifetime. Your, a, a mess is, is important for a specific period of time for you to attain a message. Ultimately, what is God's purpose for your life? God's purpose for your life is for you to succeed in everything that you do. God wants you to succeed in everything that you do so that that can be a lasting testimony. You know, at one point, the disciples of Jesus asked Jesus after they saw a man that was born blind. And they asked him, Master, for this man to be born blind, who sinned? Who sinned? Is it, is, is it his parents? Or is it the generations behind the, the, his parents? And Jesus said, this man was born blind so that the power of God can be displayed. I want you, ladies and gentlemen, to realize that you might be in that mess for God to display his power. So as a child of the kingdom who believes in the kingdom principles, we don't blame God when things are going wrong. But then we take responsibilities on behalf of our friends and on behalf of ourselves. In fact, even on behalf of your family, you take responsibilities and seek the face of God. Last week I spoke about uh, the difference between a prayer of petition and also a prayer of declaration where you can declare things into existence. A prayer of petition is when you seek the face of God and plead with God for him to grant something. I gave an example of Ezekiel, Ezekiah, uh, in fact, who, who sought the face of the Lord and asked God, to add more years on his life. He was petitioning God. He was seeking the face of God for God to add years on his life because Ezekiah knew that uh, anybody can die. You, you don't have to reach a certain age for you to die. You can die when you are one year old. You can die when you are 15 years old. You can die when you are 30 years old. You can die when you are 80 years old. So when God gives you more years, it is a blessing from him. And Ezekiah sought the face of the Lord in petition for the Lord to add years on his life. But also, there are things which are outlined in the scriptures which are our portion, including healing. Healing is your portion. A good health is your portion. Success is your proportion. For you to break away from poverty is your portion. So there are things that you need to make petition for and the things that you need to speak to. You speak to money because money is a spirit. 
according to the Bible, the Bible says you, you, don't, you don't save God and mammon at the same time. In this, in this regard, Jesus is putting God and mammon, which is money, at the same level, which simply means if God is spirit, that other uh, competitor, which is mammon or money, is also a spirit. So if money is a spirit, money can be spoken to. Money can be commanded to come to you. So you don't pray for money because in heaven there are no banks. You can't pray for, for, for money because, because in the kingdom of God there's so much plenty. You just have to speak and declare. As the Bible says, you shall declare a thing. My favorite subject, my favorite uh, 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 scripture rather. You shall declare a thing and uh, it shall be established. We are living in the end times, my brothers and sisters, where we get to go to a point where we just have to know that God is in control. And this takes me to, 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 to another very important point that uh, it is well to live by faith. The Bible encourages us to live by faith. But then I also believe that you need to, to transcend from just believing to knowing. And this is the place where I can call a self-actualization point or place where, where, where you just know that this God will never leave me nor forsake me. Even for David, when he said that uh, I am now old, I've never seen the righteous, a righteous begging for bread. He was talking from experience. There are times where you need to speak from experience, where you need to testify of the things which God has done in your life. You don't just have to depend uh, upon what you read. It's important to read the testimonies of others in the Bible, to read the testimonies of others through, through, through books. It is okay to even listen to other people's testimonies through, through radio, through, through television. It's okay. But then, when are you going to tell us about your testimony? There are so many things that God has done in your life. And you hardly testify. You hardly talk about the things that God has done. Why is it so? Listen to me, my brother and sister. Any experience or every experience which you go through is for a purpose. The purpose thereof is for you, my brother and sister, to display the power of God to the nations. Because yourself, as a person, you are unfinished project. God is busy with you. You don't know what God is going to do with you in the next five years or ten years or five minutes or ten minutes. For God's timing is not your timing. You can put a timetable on the table and say to God, this is how things must be done. But ultimately, God has the last say. And one thing that I will tell you is that God is not yet finished with you is not yet done with you. He's busy preparing you so that you may be a weapon in his own hands. Listen to me, my brother and sister. You are a weapon in God's hands. And when God is sharpening you, don't take it personal. So when you are in a situation where you are requiring God to move, remember, he will move based on the knowledge that you know of who God is. He has given us faith. Yes, as I said earlier, that faith is it's okay. But you need to move to a point where you just know. You know, like the Bible says, be still and know that I'm God. You know, you know I mean, the psalmist speaks with boldness. Be still and know that I'm God. Yes, he is God. You know, sometimes you need to get to a point where you stop thinking. Where you stop having this mind running all around and trying to seek for help, trying to get help. Help right there because God is right there. You are looking for God in a foreign land. God is right there. Some people, they travel to Israel looking for God. Others, other people, they travel to Nigeria looking for God. Other people travel to America looking for God. God is right there. The Bible says, yeah, I stand at the door and knock if you hear my voice. And open my door, I shall dine with you. How do you pray based on kingdom principles? You, you have to know what the instruments of your successes are in the scriptures. If the Bible says, you shall not die but live and declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Stand on that and declare it. And the Lord is going to add more years to your life. You know, many can say that that sickness, that disease has killed many. I'm here to prophesy over your life that what has killed many 
God is going to use that to give you life. Just like uh, Moses, the Nile River to Hebrew women was the worst thing that ever happened to them because the pharaohs and the Egyptian government would take the Hebrew boys and throw them in the Nile River. And the Nile River was killing many, many, many Hebrew boys. And the same river that killed many Hebrew boys was the same river that gave life to Moses. It is the same river that gave Moses hope. It is the same river that gave Moses an opportunity to enter and to be raised in the Pharaoh's house, in the palace. The same river which has killed many. But for Moses, it gave him an opportunity for just another day. An opportunity to enjoy life. I'm here to decree and declare upon your life that which has killed many for you to give you life solutions. It's not about what the doctors have said, the scientists have said, what educated people have said, what politicians have said, but it's about what God has said. Kingdom principles, ladies and gentlemen, are found throughout scriptures, throughout the Bible. When we read the scriptures and put them into application, when we stand on those scriptures and believe God for great things, God will bring things to pass. God will make things happen. Ladies and gentlemen, as I'm about to close, I just want to give you an opportunity. If you don't have a, a relationship with Jesus, today you can make him your Lord. Today you can accept him as your Lord and your Savior. I, I just want to pray with you. I don't know what uh, operator you're using to watch this program. If it is a phone, just keep it in your hand. I'm going to pray for you. If it's a television, just touch your TV. I'm going to pray for you. And I want you to say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, here I stand at the door and knock. And Father God, I ask you to open for me. Even as you open for me, I know you are also entering into my heart. Thank you, Father Jehovah, my God, for the opportunity of forgiving my sins, for cleansing me, and for turning me from all unrighteousness. I give you glory, Lord, and I give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I just want to pray for somebody who is sick. I don't know what your problem is, your sickness is. I don't know what your situation is. I'm also praying for somebody who is going for job interviews or for a business opportunity, or somebody who's seeking financial breakthrough, I'm praying for you right now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, you know the needs of your people. You know the challenges that they are going through. Right now, Father God, I send this prayer to the headquarters of the kingdom of heaven. And I pray that, Father, may you open the floodgates of heaven and overtake your children, your people, Father God, give them an overflow abundantly. Let them experience you more than ever before. Let them experience your grace, your power, and your favor. Father God, I give you all the honor and glory and power. Thank you, Father, for answering their prayers. Because, Father God, I'll be waiting upon their testimonies. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for watching our, 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 our broadcast. Uh, I'm inviting you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, be kind to share the link to your loved ones. Thank you very much for watching. God bless you and uh, till we meet next time.